Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Webdev. In this video, we will see how we can configure the static IP address to our virtual machine. So right now, so if you try to understand the Docker machine, right now it is using the NAT interface. So what is the meaning of this NAT interface? As I already told you, right? The problem with the NAT is outgoing connections are allowed, but incoming connections are blocked. So that means if I want to connect uh, from outside to the virtual machine means it has it will be blocked so we need to use some port forwarding or something like that and we need to connect to the machine so we connect to the machine so what is this one in this nat adapter so nat allows the virtual machine to share the host system ip address and the network connection so here the virtual machine will share the ip address and the network connection the host system acts as a router so that is nothing but the virtual machine will act as a router translating the traffic between the virtual machine and uh, sorry the host system will uh, in between this and the host system will be there and it will translate the traffic between the virtual server machine and the external networks so the virtual machines connected via net generally have limited direct visibility on the external network they typically appear as if they are the host system when communicating externally NAT is oftenly used when you want to conserve IP addresses or when you don't need direct external access for each virtual machine. So when we use this NAT adapter, so when you don't want our virtual machine to be contacted from the external means, then we'll use this NAT adapter. So right now through this command prompt, so I'm using this command prompt, right? So from this command prompt, I cannot use, I cannot directly contact the virtual machine and I cannot directly use it from the remote. Why? So I, as, as I already told you, right, so it is connected through the NAT gateway and if I want to connect it, so what I will be trying to use it. So here in our settings, in our settings, in our network, if you try to see here in our, in the advanced, so we are using the port forwarding triple two, double two, double two and to the guest port double two here like this. So now whenever we want to contact to the virtual machine, so I need to connect it to, to this double two, double two port. So in this, in this way we are connecting. So that means. Here if I want to connect means first I need to power on the machine. So let's try to power on. Double click it. It will power on. Let's try to start the. And if I want to connect here. So I need to use something like SSH hyphen port. Double two double two. And I need to use test user. So let's connect it. At the rate localhost. Right, so like this, we used to connect it. Let's connect. It will ask you some, it will ask you the password, and then we can connect it. Yeah, so now if I try to press enter, it will ask you the password and test one, two, three, four. If I connect it, then I will be able to connect to the system. So this is how, so through the port double two double two, I am connecting into the virtual machine. But here I don't want to use it. For example, tomorrow, so now we have installed the Nginx application and also the MySQL application. Now Nginx application is connected to the port 80 and uh, what is that one? So MySQL is connected to the port 3306. Now if I want to uh, connect, if I want to connect through the external resource, from the external resource means, so I need to use the port forwarding here, something like, uh, so here I need to use the, let's go to the network, I can click directly here. And here I need to do the port forwarding. So I need to keep some another TCP rule and I need to give another host port to the guest port. That is nothing but double three zero six and 80 port. So I need to do all the port forwarding. So for every application, so container, I want to do the port forward means it will be somewhat confusing for us, right? So that because of that reason, so we cannot use the NAT gateway. So now we can, we can see that the, whether it is connected to the NAT gateway or means so how can I check it is so I can use IP address show so here you will be able to see this is our ENP 03 that is nothing but our Ethernet connection okay so what is the meaning of ENP 0 S3 means so it, it is the it is the name of this uh, Wi-Fi connection or the Ethernet connection which you are having and here you will be able to see the INET address 10.0.2.15 so this is the virtual machine box which in which it has been applied so now you'll be able to see the scope of this one and it is forever. So it, it will be valid, valid forever and preferred forever. So the host machine is this one. So the virtual machine. So and for this virtual machine is applying the IP addresses for this one. So now what I want to do it is. So now I want to instead of having this host machine, the 
NAT gateway. So what I want to do is let's the router. Okay. So let's the router apply uh, give the IP address to this one. So what I what I am trying to tell you is so here you need to understand it uh, carefully. So because of this NAT, what I am trying to do is everything if I want to up connect it means I need to do the port forwarding. So how we have did it for the 22 port to communicate to the virtual machine in the same scenario we need to do for every application. So that is not easy to manage. So this one we have discussed it. Now, so now what we need to do it is so we need to change from NAT to the bridge adapter. So here I will be showing you. So because of that reason, so we will be changing here from NAT to the bridge adapter. What is the advantage of this one is instead of getting the IP address from the virtual box, you will get the IP address directly from the router itself. Okay. So here our, for our for our for us router is nothing but the Wi-Fi router which we are having. So the Wi-Fi router will connect to this one. So it will think this virtual box is a physical network which is connected to the directly to the router and the router will assign a whole IP address to this one. So that means how my base machine, how my base machine means this laptop or this system, how this system is getting the IP address from the router. In the same scenario, the virtual machine also will get the IP address directly from the router itself. So you will not, so the virtual box though there will be no intermediate NAT gateway interface, there will be no internet host name and that one will not assign any, now what I want to say is route, uh, IP address to this one. So how my base machine will get the IP address in, from the router, similarly your virtual machine also gets the IP address from the router. So now let's try to change it to bridge adapter and here you need to make it as promiscuous mode allow all. That's it. So here I am using the Wi-Fi. So why? Because I am connected to the Wi-Fi network. Now I am clicking on OK. So now here automatic, uh, if you try to see here, Docker engine is, is actually running and automatically I changed the network. Actually, this is not the better prefer approach to do it. It's always the best approach is stop the instance and change the network and then relog in. But it's not a problem. So you can connect it like this also. So now once you made the changes, so there is no need to shut down the instance. You can uh, you can modify that in the running uh, in instance only. But the best approach is shut down the instance, change the network, and then rerun the instance. So this is nothing but what I want to tell you is how you are switching the internet from one router to. Another. So here we are switching the row internet from one router to another router. So for example, let's say that you your system is having and you are having two networks, something like Airtel and Geo. So now if the ATL internet is not working means so what will you try to do you will switch from ATL to the Geo network. So in the same scenario in the same in the same scenario we are switching the network in the virtual machine from NAT to the bridge adapter that's it. So now how your base machine gets the IPA from the router in the windows if you try to see this is your windows right. So now automatically if you try to press enter it will be connection will be closed why because a new IP address will be assigned to this one. So that's why the local host has been closed. So now let's try to see it. So now this is our Windows system. So this is our Windows system, right? How can I get this one? So if you try to check IP config, you will be able to get the IP address for this one. So if you try to see the IP address for this one is wireless LAN adapter, this one. I think wireless LAN adapter only, right? Yeah. And the IP, IP address is 192.168.1.7. Okay. So this is the IP address which we are able to get. And the subnet mask is 24. So now here the default gateway is 192.168.1.1. So this one you need to remember. So that's it. So now we are able to see that this IP address is attached to this one, right? So in the same scenario, virtual machine also will get an IP address, something like 192.168.1.2, 1.14, 1.15 or something like that you will get it. We'll, let's try to see that one. So that means the router, the, uh, the Wi-Fi router is giving the IP address to the base machine and also to the virtual machine means. So now in, uh, in uh, now the virtual machine and the physical system, the base machine can communicate with each other. So this is the thing you need to understand. So how your base machine is getting the IP from the router like in the window. So instead of virtual machine assigning the IP address to the application, now the router will assign the IP address to the virtual machine. So that's what I want to do it. So that means I can communicate to the internet and also I can also communicate to the base machine without any issues. No, par no port forwarding or nothing. So let's see how we can configure the bridge adapter. So let's go to the virtual box. So here this is our virtual box, right? And this one is, oh, sorry, this one is our, where is that? Yeah, this one is our virtual box. 
and let's log in test user and I am using test 1234. So I have successfully logged into this one. Now let's try to see what is the IP address that has been assigned to this one. So now if you try to check uh, test 12, sorry. So how we can check this one? So I got new IP address. We can able to see IPv4 address something like that. So now how can I check that one IP address show or IP? Yeah, also you can use it. So anything you can use it. Now, if you try to see in the second place, you'll be able to see 192.168.1.13. So that is the IP address which we have got it. So now I will try to show you. So now we can connect with this one in the command prompt. So, so here you can connect it directly SSH. So there is no need to use the port number. Why? Because there is no port forwarding, nothing. So test user at the rate 192.168.1.13. So this is the IP address. Now if you try to see here, it will ask you. So okay, plus S yes, and permanently added this one. So it is asking the, the password means it is successfully connected to the virtual box. So now I am using test 1234. See, now I am able to automatically connect to this one. So now if I try to do a, a IP address show, then you will be able to see. So this one is So here you will be able to see 192.168.13.1.13. So here you will be able to see 192.168.1.13. So this is the thing it has been attached to this one. So now you need to understand that for example, let's say that I will restart, uh, I will uh, sudo, I will do the reboot for this one, test 1, 2, 3, 4. So it will reboot it. Okay, let it reboot. So now you need to understand one thing is so 192.168.1.13 has been assigned to this one fine it's fine perfect uh, it's nice but you need to understand that when I restart the virtual machine or tomorrow if I come uh, for example in your home for example when you try to communicate your device to the router automatically you will get an IP address so that's okay fine so you got the IP address so now you need to understand that uh, uh, let's try to login with this one so test user and test one two three four so now we got it now if i try to use ip address show let's try to see now for example let's say that so you need to understand one thing is so now one second where is our thing yeah so now when i switch on the virtual uh, when i switch on this box and tomorrow if i want to communicate again so I cannot able to, uh, so there is no guarantee that the same IP address will be allocated to this one. Why? Because it is automatically uh, DHCP is enabled, dynamic host is enabled in your system. So that's why you are getting an automatic IP address. So the, uh, the router is assigning the IP address for you because DHCP is enabled in this one. So that's why you are getting an automatic IP address. But in this one, for example, let's say that tomorrow, uh, in your home, for example, when you try to communicate your device to the router, automatically you will get an IP address. So this concept is called as a DHCP. So for example, let's say that uh, your friend came to your home and the phone, the mobile or something like that, it will be there, right? If he connects to the router means an IP address will be assigned to that mobile automatically. Why? Because DHCP will be enabled in this one and automatically the IP address will be assigned to this. So now the problem with the DHCP is that is nothing but the IP address is not fixed. So whenever you come and connect again means so we cannot guarantee that the same IP address will be allocated to you. So the IP address will be, uh, if it is available means it will be allocated or otherwise another IP address will be allocated. So that means if you switch off your Wi-Fi and switch on again. So for example, if the power goes off, the Wi-Fi is switched off and switch on again means. So we cannot guarantee that we get the same IP address from your router. Same applies here also. So if I shut down the virtual machine and tomorrow and if I switch on the machine, I cannot guarantee that I will get the same IP address. So that is one thing. So for that reason, what we need to do is we need to make an fixed IP address means a static IP address. So we need to make the static static IP address. Static IP address means that doesn't never change. So let us see how we can configure the static IP address in the virtual machine of Ubuntu. Now we have connected here, right? So earlier we used to do hyphen P22 something like that. So here I can use SSH test user at the rate now 192. 2.168.1.13 so now here it will ask for the password okay so password we have entered it so now we have successfully entered into this one 
so now we need to configure the thing right so we need to make it as an fixed ip address so let's try to check it so in order to make this fixed ip address so what we need to do it is so there will be a process it is involved in this one so long process will be there so this one we need to uh, learn it so converting to a static address is uh, involves several steps so first what we need to do is first identify the current network con configuration so here by can check i can check it something like this okay and now what we need to do is we need to edit the netplan configuration so netplan can we ubuntu 24.04 uses a netplan for network configuration you need to edit the netplan configuration file to get a, to set the static ip address so where it is located is so let's try to check that one ls slash etc slash netplan that's it hyphen you will try to see so you will be able to see a 50 hyphen cloud hyphen init dot yml right so we need to edit that file so let's try to edit this file so we need to edit this 50 hyphen cloud hyphen init dot yml okay let's try to edit it so for that one i am using the nano editor you can use vim editor or vi editor anything you can use it so i am using nano editor and sudo nano 50 hyphen sorry slash etc slash netplan slash 50 hyphen like this we need so here you will be able to see now here you need to use dhcp false okay so we need to use it dhcp as false and we need to change some more configuration also so i will try to explain you so we will be having some list of code which we need to add it and we have added this one dhcp as false right so now another one which we need to do it is so we need to add the one second yeah so we need to use this dhcp and here we need to use the ip address which we are using so right now the static ip address which i want to use it is the uh, 192 dot like that right so let's try to go it here yeah addresses i need to use the addresses and here 192.168.1.13 and the subnet mask we need to use uh, is the 24 so normally it will be 24 only and the another one is routes so this is the routes normally we use the gateway gateway 4 so here the in the in ubuntu it has been changed so the route will be to default there is no need to remember i am not going too much depth into this one so just we can change it via 192.168.1.1 this is the gateway you will be able to see it at the first time we have seen the gateway a default gateway and if you want you can use on link true okay on link true you can use it and we need to use the name servers for this one so name servers normally dns name servers so name servers i will be using the um, Google name servers if you want you can use CDN open CDN so these all the things are there Cloudflare DNS these all things also you can use it so I am using the name servers that is nothing but 8.8.8 .8 .8 for the DNS and also the another one if it is failure means then I will be using 4.4 .4, two, two name servers I am using hopefully this is the code we can change it DHCP is false and Ethernet we are using it right yeah fine so control s control exit and now if i want to check it means so what i can do it is so sudo netplan apply that's it so now if i try to press enter so if you didn't get any errors means automatically the it has been applied now if i try to show ip address show means then you will be able to see the this is the ip address now when i switch off or switch on so whenever i do it so this is the static ip address that has that, that will be applied to automatically to this one so this is how we will be converting uh, this is how we will be doing the converting from dynamic ip address to the static ip address so now you can connect directly directly to this one so without any problem you can connect it so that's it so this changes so now that, that this is how we will be changing it now i can connect all the time so this ip address will be connected to this one i can connect all the time so hope you understood about the static IP address configuration. If you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you.